All right, so now I'm brought back to my main screen and we want to talk about the basics of programming in Emu here. So the first thing, and this is new for Emu, is that there are groups. Groups are wonderful. So as an example here, I can grab a couple of my lights and put them in a group. Okay, so I'll just call this uh, group one. Right now you have to tab before you can type uh, for the name. Boom. And so now I select that. Boom, I've got my group of fixtures. I can select and deselect them. Uh, maybe I go ahead, and I don't remember how these are laid out in this test file, but that's okay. I'm just going to do, this is group two. I may even have the wrong number of lights, but that's okay. Um, it's worth noting as well, I'm not uh, being a perfectionist over, over my groups and over my, my setup. Um, simply because Emu is changing a lot. They keep updating things. They're adding new features, etc. And I know I'll be redoing these uh, probably within the year. And then I'm going to make a last group with all. And so what this shows us, as you can see, is that um, selecting and deselecting groups can be done here with these group buttons. And any specific light or fixture can be in multiple groups, and that's no problem at all. So I have an all group, I have a group three, I can toggle them back and forth, etc. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and build our first queue. So if I hit clear and clear everything back to the home position, I like to do that um, because that then actually loads the default values, which you may notice didn't happen uh, from scratch, but did happen now. And I see in my visualizer, one of my lights just went bonkers. I bet I have an extra one of these. So I'm just going to go to the patch. I'm going to delete that last one because I bet I counted wrong. And then that should fix that problem. Yep. <laughs> so that my visualizer is not going bonkers. All right. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to grab... Um, our lights here. Let's just grab all of them. And what we're able to do, just like DMX, is, is we can double tap. Um, excuse me. We can go to the macros and we can uh, choose colors, for example. So I'll choose a nice blue to load a color. And then I should be able to let me deselect here. I thought I could double tap to get all the dimmers. Again, I'm still learning too, but I can select all of these dimmers here. And I can bring them all up. So now they're all on. And then I want to get all my strobes. You can see here, this is an area that definitely could be ripe for improvement because here, now we've got them all in the visualizer. They're sort of a mess, but that's okay. Um, for whatever reason, my visualizer is being a little crazy. It happens, man. And so what we're going to do now is, oh, good. It's finding itself. Cool. Is, uh, <laughs> we now can go ahead and save this as our first queue. Okay. So you can see here, just as a quick recap, um, I can select individual. Oh, that's right. Individual faders. I can right click and select same to get the same fader on all of my fixtures. Okay. Then I can bring them up for things like colors. I can select my group. Let's just go and select that group one next Then go to macros and choose a color. Boom. Set two of them to a different color. I apologize. I don't know why my capture visualizer is freaking out. It usually does a better job. And then I can go and I can save it. So what we have in DMXs here are called programs and banks. Okay, so, sorry, in Emu. In DMXs, they were called um, banks and presets. They've now renamed presets to programs, which I think is a good name. Just because uh, if you ever get into other lighting consoles, the term preset is used for a slightly different concept, a building block that builds the cues, or as we're calling here, programs. Uh, they kind of like to with the naming schemes in emu draw and kind of walk the line between professional lighting control terms and terms used in electronic music okay um and though the interface looks like it's an electronic music thing it's totally good for for bands and djs and you know stuff like that so we can go in here and have multiple banks 
multiple programs, um, but we can create them all from the main screen, which is a big upgrade from DMXs, right? You had to go to the different screen, toggle back and forth all the time. So I'm just gonna go create new program, boom. And now we've created a new program with those looks. If I clear, then I've got my default and I've got my new program. And it looks like not everything programmed, which is curious. So I'll go back again and check as to why that, that happened. Might have something to do with when I hit default. So we'll go ahead and say we go select same, set value, get them all going in the same place. And then I want to just this time, I can go and I can hit the save key to save my changes. And then in two, we just go and select same, whoop, select, sorry, select same, perfect. And then we just do a macro and this time we'll go to a nice red. And we'll save our program. Uh, the things that save, I believe I see what's going on here, is the things that save are the things that are highlighted maybe. We'll check this out. I apologize because again, I'm learning this just as you are. So we'll go ahead and select that same, open these all up, set our color. So let's just try not setting our color. That didn't work. So there's a little bit of funkiness here occasionally. I'm still trying to narrow down where that is, um, but overall it does work pretty well. Save it. So first, second, first, second. Finding that clearing may not always be the most helpful thing. Okay, so it looks like actually if I clear, um, that's actually saving it. That's actually changing that program when I hit clear. So uh, use clear sparingly. Okay, that's a new feature here. It doesn't necessarily work the same as other lighting programs. And so that's uh, something to definitely be aware of. Let's go back to colors. Again, apologize. Continually learning the new pieces of this. So now I'll go to preset one and let's just make this first fixture straight green. So it does look like it is saving automatically when I make those changes. Just for kicks, just to test this out again, because um, we're learning here together what's new and what's different. I'm going to actually go ahead to my shows. Everything is saved, we're good. And so I'm gonna close. I'm gonna reopen and see if it stored that uh, first fixture at green or not. I think it did, I think I see what's going on here. Okay, so this is where we do want to make sure we save as we're working with programs, but it actually is holding a uh, a bit of a programmer value per se uh, for the given light. Uh, whether I if I and if I don't save, it'll go away when I restart. If I do save, it'll uh, stick around, which is interesting. And so you always want to make sure you're saving, of course, with anything. And so those are the basics. Um, we can also duplicate the programs, as you can see here. And then in our programs here, we can go ahead and we're able to um, create new banks, of course, here at the bottom, create new programs in each bank, uh, duplicate 
delete, pretty typical. There's also auto run. So if you want the bank to run automatically with a fade time, that'll happen. If you're looking to set a fade time just between two programs, all you do is uh, set the fade time. Six seconds, ooh, that's long. And that is the fade in time. So you can see here, we fade into the other queue here at six seconds. And that is the fade in time for the given queue that you're on, which is super helpful just because honestly, the way it was in DMX is with fade to next, I just wasn't a big fan of um, because ultimately that um, was really slow. And then this guy here is just a quick uh, jump through your different playbacks, your different programs and banks. So if you want to jump through them, you can jump back and forth. but you don't have to, etc., and the fade times are respected. Okay, so as you can see, um, we're all learning here. You know, there might be the occasional bug, but at the same time, uh, right now, if you're looking to use DMXs and you can't get it, uh, Emu can be a great option, and they continue to fix stuff like this. Uh, there are also in here the oscillator and sound tracker. Um, they work a lot like DMXs as well, and for this quick tutorial, I think I'm just going to go through them here. So it's really as simple as, let's just go ahead and switch to our other bank where we've got this queue. I'm going to select uh, the same, select all my tilts. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and select all our pans, which that one I believe is the fine. Is it the fine control? Yeah. We want to select the regular control. Boom. And then oscillator, we have a sine square triangle ramp up, ramp down. So those are just different patterns that it follows. Sine is the smoothest. Chase is the offset between different lights. Shape is kind of the, uh, the curve of the sine. So you can see when I'm closer to the bottom of shape on sine, it's kind of slower at the edges and speeds up in the middle. Phase is how far apart or close together um, the different fixtures are between each other. And then last is amount. So that's okay. How big is the effect? What's the size, right? You make that real small or you stop, you bring it all the way down. It stops. You make it real small and you get a smaller effect. You make it big. You get a very large effect, which right now it's, it's going too fast actually. Um, to be able to do it. But if we slow it down here, it's all based on music. We start to get a really nice look and that that's just an oscillator on pan. It shows us here in pink, which is super helpful. Um, DMXs didn't do that. And, and um, you can do that on any channel. So you can just right click, you know, select same, boom, and then bring in, say you want to bring in that blue ramp. Now we should have a blue chase coming on here. Yeah, we see blue coming in and out. Blue is not a great example for this because we already have blue up, so a lot of them aren't moving. Let's go ahead and do red. Ramp Actually, ramp down on the blue would work okay, but now we have a red one going. So you know what? It's just a party, you know? Uh, and you can see the red starting to chase through. The different lights will speed it up. Yeah, so that's something. <laughs> All right. Um, the sound tracker is also available. Uh, to use the sound tracker, you do have to have your sound, your sound ready. Let me just get select same. So you would hit level, attack, release, and then audio band, mid, 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 mid. Yeah, I don't have my sound set up. Um, so you would need to go into the audio settings. You would need to use an audio input, audio input, audio input. Yeah. And then you can actually define all of the different bands here, which is super cool um, to, to be what does it listen to? You know, you could just do sub. 
where you can go high and it's it's really responsive to the articulation of my voice or mid, etc. So those are the basics. Um, really, uh, you know, dive in, get started. It's free for now uh, to be able to use Emu. Check it out. If you like it, you know, consider uh, getting the, the output unit through us. And if you're in the U.S. and we'll be able to upgrade you to Emu when it is available. If not, no worries. Have a great day. And thanks, as always, for watching. And, of course, as Emu updates, we will continue to update these videos. So check it out. Learn StageLightingGear.com for the upgrade program. And we'll be back with more soon. Thanks.